Let me start off by saying, I've been trying to make a video like this since Sword and Shield was about a month from release back in 2019. But I did not want to make a video like this. I just don't like being a negative Nancy in general. I normally like to be optimistic, and I've wanted my channel to reflect that. I like to keep things positive because, honestly, that's kind of needed in the world, especially in recent years. But I've been feeling down about Pokemon for a while now. The original idea for a video like this was basically going to say that Pokemon is not for people like me anymore. And it was going to be a deep dive of the series and how after Gen 5 things started to decline to the point that the games just felt lacking. Like there were still good things coming out of Pokemon, but every good decision was surrounded in this miasma of weird decisions and things that just felt off. But I just don't have it in me to complain and rant about something for a long time, so instead I'm just going to give like a, a cliff notes of what led me to think that this series is not for me anymore, and how I came to realize that it doesn't have to be this way. So to start, X and Y had good ideas, but I didn't really care for the four friends that latch on to you for most of the game. They were very underdeveloped and did not really add to the experience. It just made me dread hearing that upbeat music because I would go, Oh boy, here comes the Sunshine Gang. But really, X and Y wasn't bad. It was a noticeable drop in quality from Black and White or even its sequel, but it just needed a Z version to iron out the kinks and make a complete version of Kalos that we all knew it could be, which is why we never got Z and instead got Oras. I'm not gonna mince words here, Oraz is fine, but it's not a remake on par with what came before it. Fire Red and Leaf Green added new islands and fun little extras to make the game feel like a breath of fresh air. They took Moltres out of a cave and put him on a volcano mountain area where he belongs. There's a fun bonus plot in the post game that further ties the game in with gold, silver, and crystal, and adds a fun insight on what led up to Neo Team Rocket. It was all great! And Heart Gold Soul Silver? Not even fair to compare it to Oraz. Heart Gold Soul Silver completely trumps Oraz in every way, like making it so Crystal's storyline was mixed into Heart Gold Soul Silver, instead of having this weird epilogue that tried to haphazardly throw the essence of Emerald into the games. Also, the Battle Frontier was missing, which was taken out of Oraz and any future games for the dumbest reason ever. I'm sorry but I do not agree with the mentality that just because mobile games are a thing, that kids and others will not play a video game if it's too demanding or challenging, primarily because, have you played a mobile game before? Even the most casual of mobile games gradually increase their difficulty because that's how games work. You all have even gone on to make mobile games, some of which, according to my younger brother, get pretty difficult as you get far in them, so what are you even talking about, Masuda? Plus the thought that because a quote-unquote very small part of the players would make use of a Battle Frontier, then it's another reason to get rid of it, goes against the entire mentality they had back in the day, where even after they completed development, they went back and added stuff to make sure it's jam-packed and filled to the brim with content that would satisfy anyone who played it. Even Mew was a last-minute addition. He literally took up the last 300 kilobytes on the cart. To now just decide that stuff like that doesn't matter and the people that like that stuff should get bent kind of hurts, not gonna lie. And again, goes against what you've said before in the past, when you said that Pokemon appeals to kids, sure, but it was always intended to be a game that adults can enjoy too. So why are you concerned about kids not getting far? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, this was around the point where the decline was really noticeable to me, and while Sun and Moon was a nice step in the right direction, Ultra Sun and Moon undid a lot of the stuff I enjoyed about the game, and it didn't even fix its, like, five-hour opening. Which, by the way, if you're so concerned about kids not getting far into a game, a lot of kids wouldn't really sit through three hours of dialogue before they get to go on their Pokemon journey, but I digress. A little bit past that was around the time that Let's Go got announced, and I just kind of slumped into my chair. My first Pokemon game was Yellow, 
So it was a very mixed wave of emotions to see it being remade to be Babby's first Pokemon game, an attempt to bridge the gap between Go players and those who play the core games. I thought people understood that the Final Fantasy Mystic Quest approach was not a successful one, but Game Freak wanted to try their hand at it, and I was not interested. It's a shame, too, because starting a Pokemon game with an Eevee is such an amazing concept that I wish they did more. It's one of the many reasons I think Gale of Darkness is so good. A Pokemon that has the potential to evolve in several different forms given to you at the start leads its way to tons of replayability. But it's a game that's made for people that have never played an RPG before, and one that doesn't even add all the features that Fire Red and Leaf Green added. I like that Green finally shows up in one of the games, and I like that wild Pokemon show up on the field. They even brought back the feature where Pokemon walk with you, but I would like that more to be in something that isn't Babby's first Pokemon game. And then... Sword and Shield happened, and I wasn't gonna buy this, but then I heard from some friends that it was good, and I heard from others it was an improvement, so... Last year, I got the game for Christmas, and... Ugh. I have not finished my copy of S.H.I.E.L.D. It is the first time I have ever quit playing a Pokemon game. Pokemon Sword and Shield, in my opinion, is one of the most soulless and boring games in the series. I fell asleep after fighting at the Fairy Gym, and I haven't gone back since. This game had me on autopilot through most of my time with it, because of the complete lack of any puzzles, or anything that really required thought. I just ran through the routes and caves, fighting the trainers, seeing what new Pokemon were around, reaching the next town, taking on the gym, and repeating until I just couldn't do it anymore. The only cool thing of note were the raid battles. Those are pretty fun, and they'll never come back, which is a whole nother topic in itself. But then, the thing that ended up being the tipping point in what finally got me to make a video like this, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Okay, so listen. Gen 4 is my favorite generation. Sinnoh, as a region, I love its aesthetic. It just hits me in all the right places. The music is so good. Probably the first time I learned that a piano could not only be used for elegance, but could also be used to pump the adrenaline up and send your hype levels into maximum overdrive. And the Pokemon introduced? So many good ones! And even some evolutions to previous Pokemon that made them even better. Some of my favorite Pokemon in the franchise show up here, and when I get to talk about these games in greater detail, there's going to be a lot of me gushing about the things I loved. So yeah, I'm biased. I think it's fair to point that out so it can give a better understanding as to why I think these remakes are still a step down. Now, full transparency. I did not buy these remakes. I instead bought SMT5, but more than that, I decided to wait and see. Because as you can reasonably assume, I did not have a lot of confidence that these remakes were going to be anything that blew my socks off, and wouldn't you know it, they're pretty much the Oraz thing again. It is not a remake that improves on a lot, and instead aims to just be a base level remake with new visuals, music, and the like, and not so much in the manner that I feel matters the most, and that's the content. The only thing I can say is really neat is that The Underground, a feature I really enjoyed, is back with some cool additions and even has online options now so you don't have to own two copies of the game and two consoles anymore if you were like me and had no friends as a kid. But these remakes take away more than they add, much like Auras, and unlike Heart Gold Soul Silver or even Fire Red Leaf Green, they don't do enough where I can safely say that they're the definitive version of those original games. Primarily because they said they wanted to specifically remake Diamond and Pearl and not remake Platinum, which in itself is kind of screwy and dishonest. So, Looker's not back. One of the best characters in the series, and he's not back. As a result, Sharon, in his subplot, or also missing, 
The Wi-Fi Plaza didn't get remade because that was Platinum 2, can't do that. Uh, the Battle Frontier's gone, of course. And various other things are missing, but you know what isn't missing? The Rotom Room. Like... <laughs> what? If this is supposed to be a fateful remake of Diamond and Pearl, why are Rotom's extra forms here? Why is Sharon's book still here if you didn't put him in either? I'm at least happy that this stuff isn't locked behind a limited event, but come on now. And why throw in Giratina's origin form? That was also Platinum, not Diamond and Pearl, and come on. All you could do with the distortion world is make it a one-off room in the PAL park. We couldn't even get the full thing in HD. Cool. That's great. You know, people who haven't played Platinum aren't even gonna know why this room is the way it is, or why there's a Shadow Giratina here in a different form. I'm just asking for consistency here. If you're going to ignore the fact that Platinum existed, then fine. I don't like it, but fine. Sure. Whatever. But then ignore all of it. Don't cherry pick. Because then it makes me wonder why you picked some things, but not other things that would improve the remake overall. Like why are we back to solving math questions with Fantina's gym? Why are Gardenia and Maylene's gyms also back to their old versions when Platinum made all three of them so much better? You can't answer, oh, because it's being faithful to the original, when again, you throw in stuff that Platinum did anyway, so just put it all in. And, uh, the Battle Frontier. I'm not gonna lie, this exclusion more than anything is why I don't think I'll ever buy these remakes. I understand if you just didn't ever get into this feature, but I thought it was amazing and brought a lot of enjoyable content to fool around in after beating the champ. Like the Battle Factory, where you could use rental Pokemon like in the stadium days. The Battle Arcade, where you would battle under a random condition like status effects, weather changes, or even switching Pokemon with your opponent for that battle in particular. Or my personal favorite, the Battle Hall, where you pick a single Pokemon and choose the typing of the Pokemon you wanted to face off against. And after you beat the Pokemon of that type, the rank increases by 1 and is capped at 10. And as the rank increased, they'd stop sending baby Pokemon at you and instead send a curveball, like a cradley during the grass types, meaning you couldn't just rely on fire. Or a Gliscor during the flying types, meaning you can't just rely on electric types. I really love stuff like that. It makes me want this stuff to come back more and more as the years go on because Imagine how much more fun the Battle Hall would be with all the new Pokemon we've gotten since Gen 4. I wish we got any of the cool facilities back, but instead, all brilliant and shining do is the Battle Tower. The one I feel is the least interesting facility in any Battle Frontier, yet it's the only one that keeps showing up outside of the Frontier. Whether it gets turned into a train, or a house, or a tree, it's the same simple concept, and compared to all the others, it's just not that captivating to me. And just adds to me wanting the other facilities back more, even the ones that haven't come back since Emerald, or heck, make new ones, it's been 12 years! But no, just the Battle Tower, which really turned me off of playing the remakes, which I just need to stress. Brilliant and Shining are fine. They're Fine, you can very much play these games and have fun, but as somebody who really likes Gen 4, and especially likes Platinum, these remakes do not do much for me, and that's disappointing. I don't think it's too much to ask for a remake to be a complete version of what came before it, because they did it twice. So I know they can, they just refuse to, and no, I'm not going to blame all of this on ILCA because they only got to do what Game Freak allowed them to do. I'm sure if given the resources and the go-ahead, they could have made a fantastic remake on par with what came before, or maybe even something better. But now I just, I just feel so numb. <laughs> I. I now feel that Pokemon not being for people like me is not a problem with me expecting too much, 
it's Game Freak delivering too little, and that just leaves me uncertain on anything they do now, especially for Pokemon Legends, and yeah, I do not trust that Game Freak is gonna deliver with this game. At this point, I've been burned too many times, and I just can't get excited for a new Pokemon game until it's out, and I can see if it's good or not. I would love to be wrong. Trust me. I would love nothing more than Legends to come out and be the game that gives me unbridled feelings of joy and giddiness. I would happily eat that crow pie with the biggest smile on my face because I would be wrong and I would have a fantastic game to play. But as it stands, with Pokemon tackling a formula they never tried before, releasing it so soon and with their past endeavors leading up to this point, I just don't have confidence in Legends and I really dislike that I feel this way. I've seen some people say that they should just delay the game, but they can't. Pokemon isn't just games. It's the anime, the movies, the mangas, training card games, and merchandise galore. And when there's a new generation or main project, all these things start to enter production around the same time so they can all release close together as well. To halt one thing would mean that everything else has to halt its progress, which would result in so much time and money lost that Game Freak would rather just keep the machine going, regardless if game development isn't going as smoothly as possible, which is very much an option. Things happen out of our control all the time, and despite Pokemon being the highest grossing franchise of all time, Throwing money at a problem doesn't always make it go away. So, what would I like Game Freak to do? Well, I'm nobody that knows nothing about how anything works, so nobody should take any advice I have, nor should they care about it. But after Legends, I would like it not to be Gen 9. Even though I know that's what's going to happen, I'm sure even as I speak, the deals are already being put in place for the next anime series, the new Pokemon are getting sketched up, and copies are sent to the training card company so they can get to work on coming up with the card art and their skills and all that stuff. But I do not want Gen 9 already. What I would like is for them to tell the anime studio to make a filler arc like the Orange Islands back in the day, have the training cards and manga do their own thing for a bit, and I want Game Freak to plan better. This is a prime opportunity for them to do so. Everyone's gonna be focused on Legends, so they have ample time to plan out a new schedule that works for their current climate, because these are people that have worked on handhelds for decades. They are clearly not able to follow the same schedule with home consoles. So take the time to plan ahead. Give yourselves a buffer of time and make it so that a generation does not need to last two and a half or three years and then it's out the door. Start getting developers to do more spin-offs to help buffer things again and help you guys decide what to do with all 900 of these Pokemon. Get HAL Laboratory to do another Pokemon Ranger. Get Creatures Inc. to do another Poke Park game or Pokemon Rumble now that they absorbed the company that made those games. Get Genius Sonority out of the mobile game minds, and let's get another Shadow Pokemon game going. Maybe Koei Tecmo can make Conquest 2, and get Spike Chunsoft on the phone and tell him to make a mystery dungeon for Gen 8, or a remake of Explorers of Sky, whichever happens first. Just get these guys to take some of the slack and pressure off of you, while you take the time to make the next Pokemon a fantastic game. But that also won't happen, and again, I would love to be proven wrong. But that's about it. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> I, I don't want to be the person that spells doom and gloom, but it's just sad to see the thing that you love go in such a way that leaves you conflicted. And I don't want to write off Pokemon altogether. I want them to get better, to pull themselves out of this rut and be amazing again. But when I see what Pokemon could be like with SMT5 or heck even something like Nexomon, it just depresses me. Especially when it's surrounding something that they did right 
years ago, and they should have nailed it the second time around, but they missed the mark and it's just soul crushing. And for anyone that enjoys Sword and Shield or Brilliant and Shining or even Let's Go, I do not mean to take away any of that joy away from you. But the most important thing, more important than anything I've said about how Pokemon should be better, is that all of you, the people that still buy and play these games, deserve better than what you're getting right now. Because you all are still supporting this company. You are all still being faithful after all this time. And Game Freak shouldn't be returning that devotion with a remake that was inferior on day one, or games that just go through the motions instead of one where the heart and soul can be felt with every waking moment. Pokemon used to be one of the best RPGs in the business. A series that was always pushing the envelope, pushing the limits of what the console was capable of, and producing some of the most well thought out, enjoyable, and powerful games. But now, I can't say that anymore. And that kills me up inside. Like you wouldn't believe.